Dispatch. Uh, but for now, let's check in with our CBS News radio correspondent, Steve Putterman. He joins us now from Naples. And Steve, uh, what are you seeing? We understand that the eye wall of the storm uh, just passed through downtown Naples. Yeah, well, th this is uh, the, the strongest uh, we, we've seen the winds. It's really torrential rainfall. The winds are so strong. I'm, I'm guesstimating, based on what I've been told, that some of these gusts may be well over 100 miles an hour. Uh, when you're outside there, I just came back inside after being outside for a bit. Uh, I, you had to brace yourself a couple of times. I never came close to falling over, but uh, it's pretty tough out there right now. Uh, it's almost like a movie scene that you would witness uh, in a great film about a hurricane. But the scenes are just remarkable as these sheets of rain just come by over and over. They're continuous. It's nonstop rain and wind. You see trees sway back and forth. I saw a couple trees that had come down, even flagpoles swaying wow. quite a bit back and forth. And, you know, it, it takes quite a force to, to do that. Uh, it, it's just, it, it, obviously, it's not a good place for anyone to be outside right now. That's why, of course, news reporters are out there. But uh, it, is, it is quite a frightening scene at times. And Steve, as of 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, we are now uh, told that it, the storm has been downgraded to a Category 2, uh, which is still dangerous, and you talked about it. Uh, now 110 mile per hour winds. You said it's well over 100 miles there. Uh, what else can you tell us in the area where you are, and, and where are you taking shelter at this point? Well, I've been at a hotel, one of the hotels that you were able to get into that allowed reporters a guarantee that they were going to stay open. Many times, uh, and many of our colleagues at CBS, they've had to evacuate from hotels that were in the evacuation area. They just had to shut down. And even though reporters were willing to stay there, the hotel owners decided not to do it. So this is sort of a, you know, inside baseball thing that we have to go through. But I've been in a hotel, and uh, we've in the last few minutes, we finally lost power. It's been flickering back and forth. We finally lost some power, so we, we may be without power for the rest of the night. It's very hard to maintain power when you have winds this strong, and uh, unfortunately, we just lost power a few moments ago. Yeah, the governor had been warning about this, that there will be power shortages. We know already well over 2 million people throughout the state of Florida have lost power. Steve, you've been there now for some time. Do you think that this is the level that the officials on the ground had been preparing and bracing and warning about? Well, Rena, I do think the last day or so they've been preparing for something like this, and maybe even a bit worse. I mean, they were talking about uh, maybe even Category uh, 3 or 4, which would take it up to 130 miles an hour. So maybe they were prepared for something even a bit worse as far as the winds go. But, yeah, they, they've been prepared for it. Whether or not they've been able to do much to, to get ready and, and prevent damage, that's hard to say. Most people in the main evacuation areas, city officials estimate two-thirds of the people who live in the prime evacuation areas, the most dangerous potential areas, they believe two-thirds of the people did evacuate from those areas. So there's still a significant number of people who probably remained inside. The big concern still, as we've been saying the last few days, isn't the rain and the wind, although that is a concern. The biggest concern is the potential of a storm surge, which the best way to explain, it's sort of a tsunami-like giant wave that mm. will hit this area. The question is when and how big will that wave be? Some estimates have said the last few days it could be as high as 15 feet. So you'll have potentially a 15-foot wall of water just come in and hit you know, the coastal area of Naples, maybe even Fort Myers, although it may not be that high in Fort Myers. But this is the big concern. A wave like that is just catastrophic. It just takes, destroys so many things in its path, uh, damages so many things, and that's the big worry right now. And Steve, it'll cause massive flooding in that area as well. Oh, yes, yes. When you have a 15-foot wave come in, yes. And these are low-lying cities. Uh, Tampa, of course, uh, because of its geography, topography, and, and uh, the soil composition, so many things. Tampa is the worst city uh, in the U.S. when it comes to potential flooding, according to many experts. Uh, but Naples uh, is not a great city for potential flooding. Fort Myers isn't a, Fort Myer isn't a, a good place for potential flooding. So all these areas that lie so low and obviously on the Gulf Coast, they are trying to have flooding issues. Steve, when you talk about storm surge, is there a timeline? Can you walk us through the night of what the danger zone is for Naples? The images that we're seeing right now are pretty horrific. I can't imagine it yeah. getting worse, but you say it will get worse. What's the timeline? 
not going to get much worse. I think this is about the, the worst it's going to be, but it's going to go on for a while right now. And I'm, I, by the way, I'm just watching this flagpole go back and forth. Wow. It is swaying even further from, uh, on each side. But the, the, this type of uh, the conditions we see right now may continue for another half hour, hour max. Then it should get a, a bit reduced to normal hurricane levels if there's such a thing. So another half hour to an hour, I think things will begin to calm down. Then you get ready for the surge. All right, Steve Putterman, our uh, CBS correspondent colleague there. Thank you, Steve, and uh, make sure you stay safe. We appreciate it. Take care. Nice talking. Pressure dropping, humidity rising over 80%, increasing wind. Here we are, chapter two. So your pressure is dropping. <gasps> oh. What is it, boy? Fire? Earthquake? Hippie? <laughs> hurricane! No hurricane. The Weather Service has warned us to brace ourselves for the onslaught of Hurricane Barbara. And if you think naming a destructive storm after a woman is sexist, you obviously have never seen the gals grabbing for items at a clearance sale. We better pick up some supplies. Stand behind the flaming garbage cans. We'll be letting you into the store 70 people at a time. <laughs> so little left. Mom, let's just grab what we can and get out of here. This storm is making people crazy. Sir, for your own safety, we do advise you to evacuate. I ain't leaving. I was born in this nursing home and I'll die in this nursing home. Well, need some help there? You know, maybe you folks should come over and hunker in our bunker. Oh, it'll be fun. Okay, it's the standard crab pie drill. Everybody into the cellar. Use your main finger on the yellow side and your other finger on the orange side and turn it. Craig, I just saw an update here from the Associated Press that Irma has made landfall uh, in Marco Island. Can you expand on that a little bit for yeah, us? Yeah, we reported that. I think it was about 355. That yeah. was that, that chime that I heard. And so uh, I read the statement, Center of Hurricane Irma made landfall in Marco Island. Uh, now, it, the report was a 130-mile-an-hour wind gust was recently reported by the Marco Island Police Department. I, I can almost guarantee you there was nobody at the Marco Island Police Department calling that report in. It was most likely an automated station on the roof of the building there because uh, everybody on Marco Island should have been off of Marco Island. Uh, we're going to, I think what's going to happen here, so let's talk about how this unfolds and, and where we go from here. And let me just zoom out the radar. Let me clean it up a little bit so it's prettier. And uh, let's zoom out. No, that's not what I want. Pushing the wrong buttons. Okay, so a bit bigger perspective here. 
So what's going to happen, and, and honestly, I'm kind of happy to see this feeder band that's over here on the right is slowly advancing away. It's creating quite a bit of havoc right now in terms of rainfall in parts of Miami-Dade and Broward. I did it again, I said right here, and you folks on the radio are saying, you said it again. <laughs> so uh, this feeder band, this heavy rain band, runs from near, near Miami Beach through Aventura, uh, back through just west of Fort Lauderdale, and on up into northwest Broward. It hasn't moved a lot. There is a lot of rain coming out of it, and I'm getting some reports that some backyards are getting pretty deep in water. Uh, some of the rainfall estimates here exceed, well, and I'll check on that next because I don't want to just guess here, but, but the rainfall amounts are pretty high. But if I loop this, I put this into motion here, and you look at it, you can see that gradually these lines are very slowly working that way, while at the same time, very quickly, they're moving that way. So. Uh, there is a flood threat, but I don't think it's a substantial th flood threat at this time, uh, barring some new feeder band setting up. And if you look over here, let me clear that. If you look over here uh, to the west, I did it again. Uh, the storm center, which is now uh, approaching Naples, uh, has kind of this band that's setting up. So we'll have to watch it. That's something that, that I'm keeping my eyes on. Everything else, everything else, at least in my mind, and maybe not in everybody else's mind, but everything else in my mind is playing out kind of the way I expected it and was trying to convey it, that that uh, on Saturday that was, uh, well, Friday, but that was our last good weather day. It was our last good weather day. It was exceedingly hot, but it was our last good weather day. On Saturday, it would be too late to put up shutters. It was blowing pretty good by Saturday. In fact, Friday night, as I was driving home at 3 a.m., I thought, the wind is already up. And that concerned me just because I thought the, the storms scope, the storm reach is huge. That was a uh, four o'clock position update and we'll get to that in just a second. So, and, and s I said we need, we had a little bit extra time on Saturday to do a few things as the, it stood, the weather started to go down. And then it got worse and worse last night. The uh, eye made landfall and then it got, uh, last night it got worse and worse over all of South Florida and then the eye made landfall, of course the, the keys bore the brunt of that, the lower keys, but then the middle and upper keys bore a lot of the medium hurricane force winds and then farther to the north and east uh, where we are now in Miami-Dade and Broward, we're feeling the effects of, of the hurricane here. So it's going to continue to move to the north and because I know there may be people joining us and you're on radio most likely, and if you're not, uh, you've probably got power or at least have figured out an antenna for a uh, TV that's on a generator. Uh, the keys, the weather's improving, the winds are coming down. Uh, we've lost communication with the Key West office. They did not get wiped out. The communication link to the mainland somehow has failed. So uh, what's happened is the National Weather Service and a different office has taken over Key West's responsibilities. So we're not getting reports from the Keys right now on what happened there. Uh, I talked to the Keys, uh, Florida Keys radio network uh, and uh, the news director there, Bill Becker, and people in the Keys know him very well. They, they listen to him all the time. Uh, and he gave me the impression that while it was bad, uh, it could have been a lot worse. Now, it could have been because he wasn't able to survey a very big area. Uh, that's possible. And when I say that, let me put that into perspective. The area where the eye wall went, if there were boats, they likely got swept away. The area where the eye wall went, if there were weak structures, they likely got blown over. The area where the eye wall went and there was storm surge, uh, there was likely some damage and maybe some severe damage. But from his account, they were able to stay on the air with their transmitters, and despite the loss of power, they were able to keep their generators running in the keys. So going farther up the keys chain into the upper keys, the weather is going to begin to improve and is already slowly starting to improve. The highest wind gusts have come down and the, the lulls are starting to get a little bit lower. In Miami-Dade, the worst of the weather is just about over here and will slowly, slowly uh, decrease. Now, that being said, there's still going to be a big wind gust, and it may sound like it's coming back, but it's not coming back. These are wind gusts that are going to happen, and they're going to happen. In Broward, the worst, uh, the, the worst of what we're getting is what we're getting right now in Broward. So a lot of wind, uh, these annoying little nuisance tornadoes that uh, apparently haven't created a lot of damage and they're based on a radar signature. There's not somebody seeing them despite the one that happened at Fort Lauderdale, but even then we didn't hear of a report of damage. So let me punch up the radar. 
for those who you can see it. And uh, so the worst of the weather right now is in Broward, but in about three hours, the weather is slowly going to start improving in Broward as well. So, so that kind of sums it up. We're, we're going through what we would go through considering the situation as it is, and there are no real surprises with respect to that. All right, Craig, thank you, and we appreciate that. Uh, but for now, let's check in with our CBS News radio correspondent, Steve Predderman. He joins us now from Naples. And Steve, uh, what are you seeing? We understand that the eye wall of the storm uh, just passed through downtown Naples. Yeah, well, th this is uh, the, the strongest uh, we, we've seen the winds. It's really torrential rainfall. The winds are so strong. I'm, I'm guesstimating, based on what I've been told, that some of these gusts may be well over 100 miles an hour. Uh, when you're outside there, I just came back inside after being outside for a bit. Uh, I, you had to brace yourself a couple of times. I never came close to falling over, but uh, it's pretty tough out there right now. Uh, it's almost like a movie scene that you would witness uh, in a great film about a hurricane. But the scenes are just remarkable as these sheets of rain just come by over and over. They're continuous. It's nonstop rain and wind. You see trees sway back and forth. I saw a couple trees that had come down, even flagpoles swaying wow. quite a bit back and forth. And, you know, it, it takes quite a force to, to do that. Uh, it, it's just, it, it, obviously, it's not a good place for anyone to be outside right now. That's why, of course, news reporters are out there. But uh, it, is, it is quite a frightening scene at times. And Steve, as of 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, we are now uh, told that it, the storm has been downgraded to a Category 2, uh, which is still dangerous, and you talked about it. Uh, now 110 mile per hour winds. You said it's well over 100 miles there. Uh, what else can you tell us in the area where you are, and, and where are you taking shelter at this point? Well, I've been at a hotel, one of the hotels that you were able to get into that allowed reporters a guarantee that they were going to stay open. Many times, uh, and many of our colleagues at CBS, they've had to evacuate from hotels that were in the evacuation area. They just had to shut down. And even though reporters were willing to stay there, the hotel owners decided not to do it. So this is sort of a, you know, inside baseball thing that we have to go through. But I've been in a hotel, and uh, we've in the last few minutes, we finally lost power. It's been flickering back and forth. We finally lost some power, so we, we may be without power for the rest of the night. It's very hard to maintain power when you have winds this strong, and uh, unfortunately, we just lost power a few moments ago. Yeah, the governor had been warning about this, that there will be power shortages. We know already well over 2 million people throughout the state of Florida have lost power. Steve, you've been there now for some time. Do you think that this is the level that the officials on the ground had been preparing and bracing and warning about? Well, Rena, I do think the last day or so they've been preparing for something like this, and maybe even a bit worse. I mean, they were talking about uh, maybe even Category uh, 3 or 4, which would take it up to 130 miles an hour. So maybe they were prepared for something even a bit worse as far as the winds go. But, yeah, they, they've been prepared for it. Whether or not they've been able to do much to, to get ready and, and prevent damage, that's hard to say. Most people in the main evacuation areas, city officials estimate two-thirds of the people who live in the prime evacuation areas, the most dangerous potential areas, they believe two-thirds of the people did evacuate from those areas. So there's still a significant number of people who probably remained inside. The big concern still, as we've been saying the last few days, isn't the rain and the wind, although that is a concern. The biggest concern is the potential of a storm surge, which the best way to explain, it's sort of a tsunami-like giant wave that mm. will hit this area. The question is when and how big will that wave be? Some estimates have said the last few days it could be as high as 15 feet. So you'll have potentially a 15-foot wall of water just come in and hit you know, the coastal area of Naples, maybe even Fort Myers, although it may not be that high in Fort Myers. But this is the big concern. A wave like that is just catastrophic. It just takes, destroys so many things in its path, uh, damages so many things, and that's the big worry right now. And Steve, it'll cause massive flooding in that area as well. Oh, yes, yes. When you have a 15-foot wave come in, yes. And these are low-lying cities. Uh, Tampa, of course, uh, because of it.